There have been some major updates in the Jared Brightigan case, which we covered a few weeks ago. In case you missed it, no worries, because I'm going to summarize the backstory of this case in this video. But if you want to watch the full, detailed version of the backstory, I will link the video in the description box. For several weeks, details of a conspiracy to murder Jared have been slowly unraveling. But what's most surprising is how much the police have kept quiet until now. The latest developments in the case will shock you and leave you wondering how much more is still to be revealed. Though the case is tragic, it is good to see justice unfolding and perhaps, just perhaps, maybe karma being served on a golden platter. It's time for everything to come full circle and for Jared's family to finally have some closure, or at least the very beginning of it. So buckle up and get ready as we dive in to the latest updates in this case. Hey guys, I'm Annie Elise. This is 10 to Life. Let's jump right in. Jared Brightigan lived in Jacksonville, Florida. He was a husband, father, and from what I've read, he was a very respectable and genuinely kind man. He had been married once before and had twins, a boy and a girl with his ex-wife, Shanna. After his divorce in 2015, Jared met Kirsten, and the two were married in 2017. Later, they had two more daughters, making Jared a father of four. By all accounts, not only was Jared a nice guy, but he was a family man. He was a hands-on father and spent a lot of time with his blended family, and Kirsten and Jared seemed to have a great relationship. But not everything was perfect. Even though Jared had gotten a divorce back in 2015 and the custody agreement with his twins was set in stone, there were still court filings constantly coming in, and they were all coming in from his ex-wife, Shanna. Many people around him said that it was difficult to watch Jared go through the constant court battles when all he wanted was to focus on being the best husband and father that he could. Then an unexpected tragedy struck on the night of February 16, 2022, when Jared was shot multiple times while attempting to move a tire out of the road near his ex-wife's house. Jared had just dropped off his nine-year-old twin son and daughter to his ex-wife's home in Jacksonville Beach, and he was headed back home. He had his two-year-old daughter Bexley in the car with him, when Jared stopped because of a tire on the road near the exit of the sanctuary neighborhood where Shanna lived. He wanted to move this tire out of the road so that nobody else driving would get hurt, but Jared was shot multiple times as he attempted to move that tire. His vehicle hazard lights were still blinking with his daughter sitting in her car seat unharmed. Bexley remained in the car for three full minutes near her dad's lifeless body before a passerby stumbled upon the gruesome scene, pulled her from the car, and called 911. Police believed that the incident was a planned and targeted ambush, but there were no immediate leads. Everyone that knew Jared was completely shocked. Jared didn't have any enemies, he wasn't involved in anything shady, no drug involvement, nothing at all that they could come up with as to why somebody would do this. They wondered if maybe the tire setup was for somebody else, and maybe Jared just happened to drive up to the tire in the road first. But the whole thing just didn't make sense, since Jared got out of the car and it would have been obvious to anybody that it was Jared. If the intention was for it to be for somebody else, it would have been clear that that person was the wrong person. So the investigation into Jared's murder took off, and it continued for several weeks. Police began releasing surveillance footage of a blue Ford F-150 truck that they believed could be connected to the crime, but there was nothing released other than that. So in Kirsten's own words, whoever did this had to be sick and evil. 
On February 16th, Jared Bridegan was driving home with his two-year-old daughter in Florida when he was shot dead after getting out of his car to move a tire in the middle of the road. Two months later, his wife is still searching for answers as the killer remains on the loose. Kirsten Bridegan joins us now. Kirsten, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know that Jared had four children, two nine-year-old twins from a previous marriage and two beautiful babies with you. What happened on the night he was killed? Um, so he had gone out for his regularly scheduled date night with his two oldest kids from another marriage. And on his way home, after dropping them off at his ex-wife's house, he stopped, um, which I we believe is because the tires in the road got out of the vehicle and was shot um, in front of our daughter. Yeah, the tire... The tire in the middle of the road is strange. Uh, do you think that it was placed there on purpose to possibly get him out of his car to move it? That's what it appears, um, especially in that area. That's kind of a random random thing to happen, so it appears that way, yes. So, so you think he was targeted? I do. Wow. I'm sure that um, you've talked to police about this already and gone through it over and over in your head, but I mean, did he have any enemies or did, does this make sense to you in any way? You know, it would take a very evil, cold hearted person to do this to a man like Jared. He was an amazing spouse and dedicated father, a good person all around. So whoever did this had to be pretty sick. You mentioned um, your two-year-old daughter, Bexley. She was in the car at the time, um, and she witnessed this. How was she doing? She has good and bad days. Um, she refers to the incident as the boom, um, and, and when she talks about it, she specifically calls out the sound of the gunshots and that she had to cover her ears. Um, but overall, I think she's doing as, as well as you can expect. She talks about... Daddy being with God, um, that we'll see him again. So she's she's strong, she's pushing through, and I am incredibly proud of her. As the community mourned Jared's death, many people began to scrutinize his ex-wife, Shanna Gardner-Fernandez. They were scrutinizing her due to the circumstances surrounding Jared's tragic death, and that this was a targeted ambush that happened to be near her home, on the road that he always took when he was leaving her home. Shanna never spoke out after Jared's death or made a public plea for somebody to come forward, even on behalf of her children. Now, sometimes ex-spouses in these situations never say anything at all, and nobody ever thinks much of it. However, in this case, without any answers for who was responsible for Jared's death, people with immediate knowledge about Shanna and Jared's marriage started talking. Ultimately, this led to instantaneous scrutiny for Shanna after details of their vicious divorce became community gossip, along with her behavior following Jared's murder, and some red flags that immediately began to wave. So why was Shanna getting so much heat? To paint the full picture, we have to go back to the beginning. Shanna Gardner-Fernandez grew up in a Mormon community in upscale Alpine, Utah. Her parents, Sterling and Shelley Gardner, co-founded the company Stampin' Up, which sells paper craft products and things alike. Stampin' Up is based out of Salt Lake City, and it has an estimated revenue of about $100 million a year. Not a net worth. That's the revenue per year. A lot of money coming into that family. About a year into Jared and Shanna's marriage, Shanna became pregnant with the twins, a boy and a girl. Now, when the twins were born, their daughter was healthy, but their son was unfortunately born with a very serious congenital heart condition. Doctors told Jared and Shanna that their new baby boy needed to live at sea level for his heart to function properly. So they moved to Connecticut because it was close to Jared's brother and his wife, which was also close to their son's doctor, the specialty doctor in New York. Even though Shanna and Jared had only been married for around two years at this point, after the move to Connecticut, their marriage took a major turn for the worst. Shanna stopped going to church, and she also started a very intense workout schedule and routine. 
Shanna was also frustrated that Jared was gaining weight and was focused on trying to start his own business. There was a lot of resentment, a lot of anger starting to build in this marriage, and Jared could feel the frustration in their marriage creeping up more and more. So he convinced Shanna to move to Jacksonville, his hometown, saying that's where they could have a fresh start. Shanna agreed, and soon after, the family of four moved. Jared continued to be a devout LDS member, but not so much for Shanna. Despite growing up LDS, Shanna, at this point, was over it, and it's been reported that she is no longer LDS at all. For Christmas in 2014, Jared bought Shanna a set of personal training sessions. He did this because she was, of course, really active in her workout routines. She was trying to get healthy. She just had this new fondness and borderline obsession, one could say, with constantly working out. So he bought her some personal training sessions. Shanna started her personal training sessions soon after Christmas. And it wasn't long before Shanna allegedly started having a relationship with her personal trainer which let's just say that is like the biggest cliche of all. And not for nothing, but my husband is actually a personal trainer. He does like very select personal training sessions, so uh, a little uncomfy, but let's, I digress, I digress. Soon after starting these sessions and this alleged affair, Jared found some very sexual emails between Shanna and the trainer, and he confronted her about it. Shanna denied that there was any affair or that anything was going on, and instead just told Jared that she didn't love him anymore. She fell out of love with him. There was no affair, but I don't love you anymore. So she filed for divorce on February 13th, 2015. In court filings, she said that their marriage was completely broken. Now, as we continue with this story, keep in mind, she filed for divorce, not Jared. After she filed for divorce, Shanna demanded that she be granted the house, primary custody of the kids, and accused Jared of threatening to withdraw cash from the kids' trust funds. Jared said that that wasn't true at all and actually countered that he wanted primary custody, that he wanted alimony, child support, and the house, saying that Shanna had the resources to live somewhere else and he didn't. Because again, remember, her family comes from insane amount of wealth and had that company that has $100 million a year in revenue. The one thing they did come to an agreement on was custody. They came to an agreement with shared parenting 50-50. But that never stopped the fighting. They continued to drag each other back into court for six years. As the years passed, Shanna's filings grew more hostile and her accusations more extreme. In 2019, Shanna accused Jared of coaching and interrogating their minor children and recording their statements and threatening to use these coached recorded statements against her in court, calling the conduct abusive and outrageous, and then further demanding a social investigation. So now that you kind of know the tumultuous history of the relationship and the divorce, let's go back to the months after Jared's death when Shanna was in the line of fire of public speculation, and one person who remained anonymous spoke to the media. The man worked at a Florida tattoo shop, and he told media outlets that when he heard about Jared's murder and Shanna's name being brought up, he realized that he knew her, and he had become somewhat of friends with her or acquaintances with her years back after the divorce. Apparently, Shanna had come into the tattoo shop one day, but then kept coming back to the shop just to hang out, and to vent about her soon-to-be ex-husband. And apparently while she was in the shop, she also casually brought up that he was trying to take all of her money. The employee also talked about a dinner that they had one night, where he met up with Shanna and a few friends at the Flying Iguana. According to him, she had been talking to them about her divorce, and she told them that her life could just be better if he would just shut up. And then she apparently asked them if they knew anybody that could shut him up. Now, this person says, I did not take it at the time as anything nefarious, but in hindsight, I can see how that can be taken differently now, which... Absolutely. If somebody's saying, hey, do you know anybody who could permanently shut him up? Like, that's a big red flag. Shanna finally did a TV interview, which we are going to get into in one second. But she also had an editorial style interview with the Florida Times Union. And a photographer was also there, all in an attempt to set the record straight. Shanna insisted she had nothing to do with the execution of her ex-husband, Jared. She also addressed that shut him up comment saying that people just say things during bitter divorces, and now that her friends and family are being harassed, it is becoming necessary to respond. So she was saying, I want people to know where I am coming from, and that's why I'm doing this interview. 
Shanna also said that her now husband, Mario, was a huge supporter for her and the kids throughout all of this. So let's talk about Mario Fernandez really quick. Who is Mario Fernandez Saldana? He and Shanna got married in 2018. Mario manages rental properties in the Jacksonville area. Initially, some people were suspicious of Mario because of an incident with a neighbor that had taken place. According to a police report, the neighbor had felt that Mario was intimidating her because she feeds stray cats, and he didn't want stray cats around the property. He just didn't like that. And she said that he intentionally walked his pit bull right up to where she was feeding the stray cats one day. Then the neighbor called the police. Mario said that he was just walking his dog and that it was nothing malicious. At the time when this information came out about the incident, it was also revealed that this wasn't the first time that somebody had claimed Mario made threats, specifically made threats over cats, and also said that he actually killed one cat, but the details of these incidents are unclear. So now we have the ex-wife, Shanna, who had a very rocky and tumultuous divorce and bitter divorce with Jared. We have her now husband, who apparently has a little bit of a sketchy background and has made some threats in the past. And we have a lot of public scrutiny at the two of them. Almost a year after Jared's sudden and senseless murder, Shanna pulled her twins out of their private school and moved across the country to Washington. Records showed that Shanna's parents bought her a house for $1 million through an LLC. Interestingly, though, her husband Mario did not make the move with Shanna and the kids. We have no idea why Shanna decided to move, why it occurred during the middle of a school year, or what exactly was going on. It just seemed like it was literally out of nowhere, and it got everybody talking. Coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally at all, just a few weeks after Shanna moved, the police announced that they were going to have a big press conference about the Jared Brightigan murder. The whole time, the police had literally been silent for 11 months, so this was huge. Henry Tenen, who was named as the suspect in the killing, was reportedly involved in a conspiracy with others to kill Jared as early as January 4, 2022. This was more than a month prior to the murder. Henry is also accused of accessory after the fact, starting on the day of the murder and continuing through August 19, 2022, which was one day after he was arrested and held in custody on unrelated charges. He was charged with the conspiracy to commit murder, second-degree murder with a weapon, accessory after the fact to a capital felony, and harming a child, since the two-year-old Bexley was in the car when Jared was killed and she could have been harmed as well. State Attorney Melissa Nelson has publicly stated that he did not act alone, though, suggesting that there may have been other individuals under investigation, suggesting that there may have been other individuals involved, and suggesting that there may be other individuals currently under investigation. At the time, the identity of any other individuals wasn't disclosed because it was still under an active investigation. Now, Henry has a lengthy criminal record dating back to 1998, which includes charges of different domestic disputes, leaving the scene of an accident, fraudulent activity, and multiple driving under the influence or reckless driving charges. Kirsten, Jared's widow, spoke out after the charges were announced and said that she had no idea who Henry was and was adamant that Jared didn't know him either. So how could this have been targeted and planned for somebody who they didn't even know? She also said that the news of a conspiracy had only confirmed her suspicions, saying that she had felt that way since early on, so that it didn't come as a surprise to her. But that's when things got even weirder. While Henry's most recent court documents listed his address as the 8700 block of Old Kings Road, some online people finder research tools suggest that he may have lived at the 5200 block of Potomac Avenue. Now here's why that gets interesting. Property records for that address on Potomac Avenue indicate that Mario, Shanna's husband, owned the home from 2017 to October 2022. So what are the chances of that? Mario owns the place that this random 61-year-old man lived and is also the person who happened to shoot his wife's ex-husband? Mm, a little too close for comfort. With Henry's arrest warrant sealed, a lot of people were left wondering who was involved in this murder conspiracy plot. And by that, I mean a lot of people were thinking that it could be Shanna or Mario. 
On March 16, 2023, State Attorney Melissa Nelson and Jacksonville Police Chief Jean Paul Smith announced the arrest of Shanna's husband, Mario Fernandez Saldana. He was arrested in the murder case of Jared Brightigan. He was arrested in Kissimmee and is now in the Orange County Jail. During a press conference, it was announced that Henry, the original suspect who was apprehended, has agreed to cooperate fully with the authorities in exchange for a plea agreement. He has agreed to testify truthfully against the individuals involved in Jared's murder, including Mario. Henry's cooperation has provided corroborating evidence to what has already been collected during the investigation, as well as additional evidence against Mario for his role in planning and executing Jared's murder. However, it was also announced that the investigation remains active and ongoing, and it has not stopped today with Mario's arrest. And we're going to talk more about that in just one second. Our investigation remains active and ongoing, and it has not stopped today with the arrest of Mario Fernandez Saldana. We all remain committed to seeking the truth, and that is the entire truth, and holding accountable every single individual involved in the murder of Jared Brightigan. Henry Tenen was a tenant, a former tenant of Mario, a rental property that Mario Fernandez Saldana owned. And how did uh, Henry Tennant uh, implicate Mario Fernandez-Saldana? So at this time, um, uh, pursuant to what I told Vic, the statements he has made um, are going to be redacted from the warrant, um, but he's provided sworn testimony and um, has confirmed both what we believe to be true based on other evidence in the case and provided us additional evidence in the case. And is this a death penalty case? Um, so Anne, should we file a notice of intent to seek the death penalty, we will do it within the 40-day, five-day requirement after um, Fernanda Saldana is arraigned. State Attorney, are more arrests coming? At this time, I'm not going to answer that question. State Attorney, do you have a picture of who was the shooter, who was the driver? Henry Tennant has admitted that he, in fact, was the shooter. And whose gun was it? He, um, I, I'm not going to answer any any more factual details, and thank you for understanding. I'll, I'll reiterate this one thing. This is an active and ongoing criminal investigation. That is, in fact, the exemption under the Florida Public Records Law in which we've redacted certain information. Um, and in due time, obviously, all of the facts and the evidence, as we know, will become available to all of you. Thank you for coming today. Mario was charged with first-degree murder with a weapon, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, solicitation to commit a capital felony, and harming a child again because the child was in the car when all of this took place. Much of his arrest warrant has been heavily redacted because it is an ongoing criminal investigation. However, it did reveal some new information, like Shanna meeting Mario at CrossFit in 2018 while he was working there as a maintenance man, as well as some damning evidence and disturbing details. So let's get into all of that. First of all, while two-year-old Bexley was not physically harmed, there were apparently bullets struck in the interior of the vehicle in close proximity to where she was strapped into the car in her car seat, an act that reasonably could have been expected to cause physical or mental injury to her. We already know that she was crying in the car when the witnesses arrived, but this is just so enraging and goes to show the level of scum that these people are. Not only was she crying because she didn't know what was going on and there were loud noises, but she was almost hit by a bullet from some low-level dirtbag who was busy murdering her dad for money without a care in the world that there was a child in the line of fire. Search warrants from Henry's bank showed that there were three handwritten checks deposited from Mario. Phone records between Henry and Mario show that they had 35 different contacts between the two of them in February of 2022, 30 in March of 2022, and between 5 to 9 during May and June of 2022. The police initially questioned Henry back in August of 2022 and found the connection between Henry and Mario with the bank statements back in October of 2022, right around the time when Shanna was gearing up to move across the country. Now let's look back really quick at an interview that Shanna did in June 2022, just four months after Jared was murdered. The police were at a standstill, with no leads and the accusations and scrutiny of Shanna's involvement weren't going away. Shanna had decided to hire a prominent Jacksonville criminal defense attorney, Hank Cox, to help protect her family from the publicity, the implications that she was involved in the shooting, and because some of the media outlets were taking pictures of her and her kids whenever they were out in public. 
She said that the intense media coverage had become very loud and it made her children feel unsafe. But now knowing about Mario's arrest now, I'm interested in what you guys think of her statements then, and if you find her more believable or less believable, with Mario now arrested. So let me know in the comments below. As her innocence has come into question, Shanna Gardner spoke to me in the only TV interview she says she'll be doing to tell her side of the story. I do want people to understand you know, where I'm coming from. Almost five months after Jared Brightigan was murdered in the street in front of his two-year-old daughter, we spoke with his ex-wife, who has not commented publicly so far. Our first question, why have you stayed silent? I was asked to not talk to the media or give a public statement, but with the level of speculation, I felt that now it was necessary to to speak out. Shanna Gardner revealed she was asked by Jared Brightigan's widow, Kirsten, not to speak publicly, but we wanted to know how the relationship could have gotten to that point. I'm sure they, you would say that we've had happy moments. I mean, we share the two most beautiful children in the world. In 2015, Jared and Shanna divorced. Their court records, which we obtained from the St. John's County court system, revealed a long, complicated process lasting over five years. Anytime divorce comes into any situation, it's messy. It just is. I will say that I think that we both love our kids. Jared and Shanna both wanted full custody. The court file details allegations of spying, deceit, and more. In the end, Shanna and Jared reached an agreement. They shared custody, and whenever the children were at one parent's house, the other would come over Wednesday and have a date night. That's exactly what Jared and his twins did the night he was killed. It was actually one of the, one of the things, I'm sorry. Um, I remember my son tucking him in and him saying that it was a good date night. But that happiness would end just minutes after leaving Shanna's house just over two miles from her home. In a quiet neighborhood with few security cameras, a tire was rolled out into the street. Jared got out of his car to move it and was shot dead. His two-year-old daughter sat in the car, strapped into her car seat alone for three minutes before someone came to help. I was shocked. Um, I fell to the floor because I was devastated um, for what I was going to have to tell my kids. Jared died in that street, leaving behind four children and a heartbroken family. They were, I think, in shock. Later, in a blog post, Shanna's mother said she was not invited to the funeral. I asked Shanna about the situation. His family did not invite me or want me there. But the day before a vigil hosted by Jared's widow at Celebration Park, Shanna was photographed at the park with her kids by the tabloid Daily Mail. Talk about a violation of privacy, because my kids know that they were photographed and they were worried. The tabloid presented the facts in a way that leave room for speculation about Shanna having a role in Jared's death, citing their rocky divorce papers and her absence from the funeral. Even though we didn't always get along, he was still the father of my kids. So I asked Shanna the question. Did you have anything to do with Jared's murder? No. I did not have anything to do with his murder. Shanna says she has no idea if the murder was targeted or what Jared was involved in, saying they ran in different circles. But Action News Jax reported in June, Shanna had hired criminal defense attorney Hank Cox. He was referred to me by several friends, and ultimately, my kids' images and videos were being used in the media without consent. Shanna said Cox was hired to protect her kids. I asked her if she thinks she will face criminal charges. She says no, that she's cooperated with detectives. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. I, as I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I. All I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. She told me if she could speak to Jared again, she'd say one thing. Honestly, that I wish it weren't like this. I wish things could, could have been and could be different. And Shanna told me despite this happening in her neighborhood, despite many people around her discussing the case, she has no intention of leaving Jack's Beach or Jacksonville. Meanwhile, police... I also think it's really interesting that right as the connections were beginning to be made between Henry and Mario with the phone records, the um, bank statements, all of these things, that's when Shanna up and moves 
almost as though she's trying to disengage, distance herself from Mario so that she can't be looked at as any sort of involvement. Because why else are you moving across the country without your husband? And coincidentally, it's when law enforcement is piecing all of this together. According to law enforcement sources, Shanna is still a suspect. Online and locally, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of people who think that Shanna is going down for this. Is it possible that Mario did something without her knowing? Sure. Did Mario take something she said off the cuff in a serious way and then acted on it, maybe to impress her or make her happy because she was the money train? Maybe. Like she had said years prior in that tattoo shop, did she maybe say, do you know anyone who could shut him up? And did Mario just think to himself, hey, I know a guy who has a long criminal record that would do this for money and then approached Henry all on his own accord? Who was the mastermind behind all of this? But even more than that, what was the motive? She had an excessive amount of wealth at her fingertips. She would have been comfortable and set for life. She's the one who filed for divorce from Jared. So why would she have a motive and why would she have so much hate in her heart to want to kill the father of her children? Is it possible that Shanna may have had some direct involvement in this murder conspiracy? Could it have been done to get full custody of her kids because she wanted to be done with their tumultuous custody battle once and for all? Was she maybe fearing that her kids were getting old enough to be able to say, hey, I want to live with dad and Kirsten and not you? And maybe that's why she accused Jared of coaching their kids to make statements? Or is it all just a coincidence that she moved across the country on the eve of all of this breaking and she really had no idea of her husband's involvement until way later on? I'm just speculating here, and this is all alleged and just my opinion, so as always, please do your own research, and I could totally be wrong, but I want to know what you guys think. So, as always, fire off in the comment section below. Personally, I think it's highly likely that if she wasn't aware of Mario's involvement while she was doing her own little media tour and accusing people of a social media frenzy over nothing and saying she had zero involvement in Jared's death, that she certainly was aware of it when she made the choice to move to Washington before Henry's arrest. And that's giving her a huge benefit of the doubt that she truly had no idea that any of this was going on. But that is just my opinion. Do you guys think that she had any involvement in the plan? Or do you think that she is innocent and had no idea what was going on? Regardless, the actions of these so-called adults have ruined the lives of at least four children and countless family members. How do you tell your kids that their stepdad orchestrated or conspired to kill their dad? Or is that even going to be the narrative? Who knows? With Mario now in custody, it seems that justice is finally being served for Jared Bridegan's murder. The developments in this case may bring closure to the family and loved ones of Jared who have been awaiting justice for far too long, but it still does not bring Jared back. Kirsten, his wife, spoke out after the press conference and said that she would continue fighting for justice until every single person involved in her husband's murder is charged. We are here today feeling many emotions. We have great relief knowing that two of the people behind my husband's murders are now behind bars and are no longer a threat to our family. We are also still angry, angry that they were walking free while we were grappling with the reality that Jared wouldn't be here for any future memories, vacations, or tender moments with our kids. Angry that our youngest, who was six months at the time of his death, will have no memories of her father. Angry there will be no new memories for Liam, Abby, Bexley, London, or anyone who knew and loved Jared. We have fought hard for the truth, and the world now knows what we have known all along, that Jared truly was an innocent victim. Since day one, those in charge of the investigation promised us that they would be relentless in their pursuit of accountability and justice, and they have been. We are grateful to the State Attorney's Office, Jacksonville Beach Police Department, the ATF, and any other agencies that have been involved in this investigation. Justice for Jared will not be stopped and we will not be silenced. We know there's still a long way to go before all, all those responsible are truly held accountable, but today is a very significant day for our family. Thank you. My initial thoughts on all of this, I did sit down with both Adam Bright again, uh, Jared's brother, and his widow, um, 
you know, who you just heard right there, Kirsten Bright again, this family absolutely torn up. They get very nervous going up there and doing these press conferences, but she said that the police have been relentless. This family has been relentless to try to get answers in this case. And it's also really interesting the fact that they said all involved will be held accountable. This is an ongoing investigation. And then Kirsten said two of the parties responsible for his senseless murder um, have now been arrested. So that's alluding to the fact that there could be more arrests in all of this. When I did a sit down with both um, Adam and Kirsten, we talked a lot about the trauma that they've experienced this past year with no answers, reaching out to podcasters like myself daily, you know, just trying to drum up information. And they said that every day they just look at those little kids, especially Bexley was, that was in the back seat, and they have to relive this trauma. Take a listen. There's a lot of trauma in our family because we don't have those answers yet. And unfortunately, we do have to look over our shoulder because we don't, we don't know what else is out there. For now, many questions remain unanswered due to that redacted arrest warrant. However, as time passes, more information will undoubtedly come to light, including the identities of other involved parties. Personally, I'm here for it. I'm here for the reaping of what these losers decided to sow. The coming days and weeks are sure to bring more developments in this ongoing case, and I will be keeping a very close eye on any updates. Additionally, it's worth noting that Shanna's former attorney, Hank Cox, declined to comment on Mario's arrest and actually said he is no longer working for her. It will be interesting whether Shanna will choose to remain silent or release a statement regarding her estranged husband's arrest. If she's innocent, do you think she should make a statement? Let me know your thoughts below. I will definitely be following the updates on this one, guys, because I have a feeling that when it's all said and done, someone in Washington is not going to be a very happy camper. Just saying, allegedly. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to today's case. Don't forget, subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you don't miss any updates on this case. And please give this video a thumbs up as a way to just quickly, freely support the channel. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. Was Shanna involved? Did she know? Or do you think she was innocent in all of this? And why? All right, guys, thanks again. And until the next one, stay safe. Bye.